Finally, some peace and quiet after all that hogger nonsense. Really hope I can relax for a bit. Wow, look at her. She's beautiful. And she has a quest. That's the perfect icebreaker. Hello. Oh, the perfect gift. Oh, sounds great. What a cool companion. Tennessee must really like me. And I got an achievement as well. So cool. It's certainly smaller than I thought it would be. Oh, I can talk to it? What does that mean? Guess I'll find out. What's that chicken do? Where the hell is my hearthstone? I'm stuck here. That chicken better be able to sort this mess out. Oh no. What does that mean? I don't like the looks of this, but I guess I've got another choice. No mercy. That fucking chicken. Who even was that guy anyway? Now you listen here, you. Oh, you can get me back to Stormwind? This better work, otherwise you can in this video, we're going to be looking at the fantastical mechanical chicken and its new ability to talk. Some of you may be familiar with this pet because it's actually been in the game for quite a while now. I know that I got it when I actually played retail back in the day. Well, I've hijacked the chicken and I've edited it in order to make it my personal teleportation device. But as Loki found out, it doesn't quite work straight out of the box and it requires just a little bit of warming up. So in this episode, we're going to be looking at all the changes necessary to make this possible. We'll look at the sequel first. That's the changes to the database. We're going to look at some sequel plus which is the ai behind the chicken and then we're going to compile the module into the core itself finally we'll discuss the devops side of things as well because we're at the point now where i've got code i'm pushing it and i now need to look at the ci cd aspects of this entire project just a quick one before we actually start looking at code don't worry if you can't make out what it says on the screen there will be links in the description straight to the code. So first things first, let's look at the sequel. First, we have to update the creature to allow us to talk to it. We had to add gossip text to the pet so that it had something to say. This is the text you see when you first talk to the NPC, or in this case, the chicken. We also add a script to the creature so that the core knows what code controls the behavior of the creature. And finally, from a sequel perspective, we need to add a new table to the characters database. We'll see why shortly. And just one more point, although there's a quest that gives Lucky the chicken, the sequel I'm showing you here doesn't do that. That's because I want to leave it to whoever uses this module to decide how the chicken is handed out to the player. Not to mention the fact that it can be obtained as part of a quest. In the case of Lucky, I added a quest to Tanisei to give Lucky the quest for narrative purposes only. Next, we have to create a creature script in C++. But before we do that, before we actually write any C++, well, technically we're still gonna write some C++, but first we need to define a header file. These header files define a lot of static information for us, such as key item IDs, static strings, and more. But that's a bit boring, so let's look at the best bits. The first thing we have to do is detect the user entering a gossip conversation with the NPC. Once we're inside this hook, we do a database lookup to get the stage for the current player character. If nothing is found, then we add a new entry for the player starts at stage one. This means that the character gets the first stage, which is the first single question mark. If they're at stage two, then they get the double question mark, stage three, and they're in the sewer with the sewer beast. We can see that if the stage is greater than three, we get normal options to teleport to major cities. Next, we have the code that does the actual teleporting of the player. We check the action being performed, which is set to the stage we saw earlier. That is the stage we got from the database. This is where we now see where the header files come in use. We can see in the header file that we have a location vector class defined. This lets us set the map ID, the X, Y, and Z coordinates, as well as the orientation, which is the direction that the player will face in. We've got a few of those key entry IDs here, like we've got the map for Eastern Kingdoms, Kalimdor, Outland, and Northrend, and these are the IDs that represent the actual map ID in the world. And then we can see that we've got the actual locations for stage one, two, and three defined as location vectors, which contain those X, Y, Z, and orientation values. We've even got a static value for the chicken teleport sound itself. <laughs> Finally, we do two additional things. First, we actually teleport the player to that location, the one that's in the vector. And then we also update the database. This is important because we need to make sure that the player gets the next stage when they go back into the gossip menu again. If they don't, they'll just keep getting the first stage over and over. There are a few finer details to making this code work as a module for Azeroth Core, but the video would be about 30 minutes long if I went into all of them, so I'm gonna leave that to you as an exercise. I'll leave a link in the description below. So next, we're going to compile the module into the core. We're using a public 
test realm structure so that we don't have to keep breaking the more stable code base. Next, we have a development script that really helps with compiling the changes into the code base. This is really just a shell script running a load of commands for us, but instead of having to remember those commands, you just run the shell script. Primarily, it's downloading the latest version of Azeroth Core and then recompiling it with our changes. But as you'll see in the DevOps section of the video, that will change. I use the very latest version of Azeroth Core with my public test realm because I want to get the very latest changes and make sure that my code works with those changes. And obviously because the PTR eventually becomes the stable server, you want the latest and greatest always in your latest release. If I introduce a breaking change, then I go back to my code and I make it work with the latest version of Azeroth Core. With the core compiled, we can see that the chicken will in fact now mess with the player's head to begin with. But the chicken will also eventually work as expected once the initial technical glitches have been worked out. This is all thanks to the database keeping track of the character's stage throughout the journey with the mechanical chicken. Also, the C++ itself that's representing the AI behind the creature is working with that stage from the database to determine what gossip menu to send to the client. So where does the DevOps come into this? I know that this is something that a few of you have been wondering about. Well, now that we've got a public test realm and changes we want to see go live whenever we make a change to a module, we're going to introduce GitHub Actions. The first action I want to introduce will compile the core when I make a change to a module or the core itself. This compiled core will actually become a downloadable asset that will replace certain parts of our setup script. The replaced part of the setup script will basically remove the need to compile as a rough core every single time we want to make a change, which can still be used for development purposes. But for going live, we want to download that compiled asset and just run it as a world server. And in time, I'll introduce the living world scripts, which generate SQL from YAML files using a tool that I wrote in Python. Those will get pulled daily and they'll get applied to the database at the same time. Well, there you go. That's it. That's how you make a chicken talk in World of Warcraft. And it's also how you make a chicken teleport a really unlucky night elf to various parts of the world. That guy really doesn't get a break, does he? <laughs> Just so you know, I've set up a Discord server. There'll be a link in the description below. If you want to come and have a chat about these videos or you want to make any recommendations for content ideas, then please do join us and let me know. I hope you found this entertaining and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>